Welcome to CNN and Fortune. I'm at Joe Muggs' newsstand in Atlanta. We begin, though, in Silicon Valley, where one of the hottest software companies of the moment is run for a change by an executive who's larger than life. Oracle's Larry Ellison is an international yachtsman, a playboy. He's been in Playboy. He's the opposite of a hands-on geek boss who runs his $50 billion company from so many remote locations. He's almost invisible at headquarters, a mystery. But there's no mystery about Oracle's performance. The stock has tripled in price during one year. We sent Patricia Sapka to see how Ellison does it. You can't conform in business. You have to be very careful. The only way, if, if you adhere to conventional wisdom, if you do everything everyone else does in business, you're going to lose. The only way to get ahead, to really get ahead, is to be different. At 54, Larry Ellison has mastered the art of being different. The founder, chairman, and CEO of Oracle Corporation is as dazzling as his Silicon Valley headquarters, a place the locals call the Emerald City. He's also something of a wizard when it comes to generating green. Oracle is the world's second largest software maker. And Ellison's stake in the company, that translates into a personal fortune of some $12 billion. Thank you all very much. So he's not technology's richest billionaire, but nobody wears their wealth quite like Ellison. His impeccably tailored suits landed him in the pages of Playboy. So perhaps it's no wonder that this dashing CEO is better known for the clothes on his back than the products that put them there. Oracle develops software uh, to manage information. We, we're a database software company. The number one provider of databases, software that manages the vast amounts of information that fuel business. Crucial? You bet. But hardly the kind of sexy consumer product to keep Ellison glued to his executive chair. When he's not out racing his yacht or breaking the sound barrier in his private fighter jet, Ellison is usually at one of his three authentic Japanese estates. Do you ever find it difficult to tear yourself away from here and drive into the office? So difficult that I've actually scheduled my life to spend my mornings here. No garden variety CEO. There was a time when Ellison was seen so infrequently around Oracle that his own employees nicknamed him Elvis. But for the past 18 months, Larry's sightings have been on the rise. The routine that you have had for the past year and a half, is it been out of character? Have you been working more? I have been working more. That's, that's true. And, and the reason I'm working more is this is an extraordinary opportunity. My industry, and uh, in fact every industry soon, is going through this tectonic change. He's talking about the explosion of e-commerce, a development that creates major opportunities for Oracle. This is when it's all going to happen over the next 18, 24 months. You know, the winners are going to be chosen and the losers are going to be chosen and we had better stay focused. Right now it's not clear who will be the primary uh, provider of software for the internet. But as of right now, it's us. Oracle databases power the top 10 e-commerce websites. But Ellison has an even bigger power play in mind. Eventually the world is going to move to the internet. Taking down Microsoft with a weapon he calls internet computing. What is internet computing? Well, about four years ago, I made a provocative statement saying that the PC was a ridiculous device. You have to add software to your PC to make it work sometimes. The whole idea of putting a floppy disk into a PC and loading software is ridiculous. The whole idea of backing up the data on your PC is ridiculous. But it's the way most business is done today. Lots of PCs with lots of Microsoft operating systems running even more Microsoft software. It's all wrong. Lots of little computers are a terrible idea. You can't see the big picture because it's been you know, sliced and diced and it's stored in so many different locations. We've fragmented this information that makes it impossible to know what's going on. What Ellison wants to do is simplify, cut out the operating system and move all the software and information from individual PCs to a big computer called a server. All the end user needs is an internet browser, a new way of computing that conveniently renders Microsoft's Windows monopoly moot. There's only one program that's really important on your PC, and that's an internet browser. Once you have access to the, inter the internet, you have almost everything computing has to offer. If the idea behind internet computing sounds familiar, it could be because not so long ago, Ellison was peddling a similar vision under a different name, the network computer. Larry predicted that the whole world would one day do its computing on very simple uh, 
computer boxes without hard drives and without other uh, gadgets on them. And they, these things would sell for two, three, four hundred dollars. Investigative journalist Mike Wilson authored an unofficial biography about Ellison and the rise of Oracle. The reason it didn't happen was that the, the price of a real computer, uh, a Windows-based computer, fell so sharply that you could get a lot more than, uh, you can get a lot more for your five hundred dollars than what you could get from Larry's NC. The prices of PCs plummeted, so the Absolutely. network computer didn't take off right. so much for your vision. Well, so it was to say that internet computing is going to be adopted by business. What I never expected was that the PC would mutate into a network computer. What's breathtaking is that the primary reason people buy PCs today uh, is to access the internet. And PCs are quickly on their way to $500. The vision is absolutely coming true. A man ahead of his time? Perhaps. But Ellison is rarely on time. Hi. He's running two hours late for this meeting. Okay, it's going to be kind of strange having cameras around here, but seriously, just ignore them. Ellison is not only preaching internet computing, he's making it standard practice at Oracle, reorganizing entire departments over the web. I want to force all of our sales reps to demonstrate the product over the internet. And all of Oracle's products are tied to the web. There's nothing but net strategy. When did you actually start implementing this at Oracle? Any desktop software for Windows I want shut down was probably about a little over two years ago. And that was pretty provocative inside of Oracle. Uh, we had some, some engineers quit. Some people, you know, thought I was, I'd lost my mind. Ellison's forward embrace of the web has given Oracle at least a two-year time-to-market advantage in key software products implemented over the internet. We're nothing but not 100% pure internet. What if you're wrong? We're test. We're out of business. A bit of an exaggeration, perhaps, but one of Ellison's most effective weapons is pure theater, like his high-profile barbs at Bill Gates. This is another Bill Gates quote. Said, Bill said, gee, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find things on my PC. Maybe everything should be in a database. <laughs> the man is brilliant. Why do you shape this in such intensely personal terms? Oh, because it's so widely covered in the press. <laughs> it's uh, just to make it more graphic and make it, make it more visible. The, the personal computer, I mean, Bill has owned, uh, you know, this, this, one, this, this current generation of computing. And I'm trying to contrast what personal computing is to what Internet computing is going to be and make it a little, you know, a little more interesting by throwing some personality into it. That's all. Is there some part of you that maybe just admires or likes Bill Gates just a little bit? Well, Bill and I used to be friends a long time ago. Uh, that's before he, he turned mean and, uh, and ran Netscape out of business. So I think what Bill did to Netscape was appalling. So I don't talk to Bill anymore. Um, I think it's true that, that uh, Bill tried to run Netscape out of business, but believe me, Larry Ellison didn't take it personally. I think that he gets a kick out of Bill Gates and that he loves uh, having this uh, person to have a rivalry with. There's no ill feeling between Bill Gates and Larry Ellison. That's completely manufactured for the press. But playing to the media doesn't always work in Ellison's favor. It was widely reported, for example, that while Oracle's revenues were stumbling in 1997, Ellison took off on a three-month sailing vacation. Mythology. I didn't take off three months. I've read this story many, many times, uh, but I was, I've never been gone for more than a month in Oracle in my, in my life. In fact, this three-time divorced, eligible billionaire claims that when it comes to his life outside Oracle, the press often gets it wrong. Women. Wow, okay. You have quite the reputation as a playboy. You know, I, I have, that's another thing, you know, but like the, taking the, th the three months off, uh, I mean, I jokingly say, uh, if it were only true, it would be great. <laughs> um, I've been in fairly serious relationships uh, most of my life. Um, it's true. That's true. I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a fairly serious, you know, a, a very serious relationship right now. So all these reports we hear about Silicon Valley's most accomplished playboy. Uh, yeah, not... Hi. I, that's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's really, yeah, I'm afraid so. And let's talk about something else that you're very well known for. You like fast cars. You fly <laughs> fast planes. You sail fast boats. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and you, mea culpa, guilty as charged. <laughs> that one, I'm afraid, is true. You put yourself in danger. <sighs> well, I've said I like to put myself in demanding, challenging situations, but not to the point where my life is really at risk. But that wasn't the case at last year's Sydney Hobart Regatta, sailing's toughest open sea race. Officials had forecast a storm. Ellison, at the helm of his yacht Sayonara, 
got something far worse. We didn't know until I went down below, went down to the nav station and looked at the satellite photographs coming in, and we saw that we had just sailed right into the eye of a hurricane. Imagine a four-story building that's water, and the boat just crashing into it. And normally a boat will slide down the back of a wave. This time, you don't slide down the back. The wave is so steep, you don't slide down. You literally exit the wave, and it's like falling down an elevator shaft. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boom. And the surface tension in the water is such that it's literally like your boat being dropped off a four-story building onto asphalt every 45 seconds. Six sailors on other boats died in the treacherous waters. Others were fished out by rescue teams. And we were far enough away from the helicopter re uh, rescue teams that pulled most of the guys out of the small boats that they couldn't have gotten to us. So if our boat had sunk, we all would have died. But sayonara weathered the storm and won the race. Everyone had made it through with, without emotional you know, uh, outpourings until they saw their wives and their girlfriends on the shore. And I don't think there was a dry eye on the boat. The race landed Ellison back in the headlines, this time as a poster child for reckless CEOs. Do you think it's a responsible way to behave as the head of this major corporation to be putting yourself in danger? Well, I have to, I have to do my, my, the best I can possibly do as head of Oracle, and I, I work very hard at, at, uh, at being a good CEO for Oracle. But at the same token, I can't stop living my life. Life is, is a miracle, and I don't want to spend it just doing Oracle. Still, Ellison isn't planning to leave the Emerald City anytime soon. Oracle's wizard may appreciate miracles, but he loves competition even more. You're a billionaire. You could do anything you want. Why are you still running this company? Because the most, more exciting, uh, and, and a bigger race, and a more exciting race is the one that Oracle's in. More exciting than the Sydney Hobart, more exciting uh, than anything I've ever done is this race towards internet computing. Larry Ellison was under sail again in June, placing first in his class in the Fastnet race off the coast of England. On board Ellison's boat was a yachtsman who won the Fastnet 20 years earlier and who went on to other sailing and business triumphs, Ted Turner. Still ahead. Shop now. A trip to the cyber supermarket. We've kind of put a, a high-tech touch to a very old service. But next. Venture capitalism with a harpoon. Oil was money and power, that is whale oil. A voyage to last century's Silicon Valley. The automotive or